All right, we are on workbook lesson 39 of A Course in Miracles. This is, my holiness is my salvation. My holiness is my salvation. This is the last lesson that, for at least for now, that talks about holiness. It started, all started on lesson 38, sorry, 35. My mind is part of God's, I am very holy. And then it moved to lesson 36. My holiness envelops everything I see. And then lesson 37. My holiness blesses the world. Lesson 38. There is nothing my holiness cannot do. That was yesterday. And now lesson 39. We have my holiness is my salvation. So let's read it. This is a long one. This is the longest one so far. Um, so let's read it and we'll talk about it. Paragraph 1. If guilt is hell, what is its opposite? Like the text for which this workbook was written, the ideas used for the exercises are very simple, very clear, and totally unambiguous. We are not concerned with intellectual feats nor logical toys. We are dealing only in the very obvious, which has been overlooked, in the clouds of complexity in which you think you think. Paragraph 2. If guilt is hell, what is its opposite? This is not difficult, surely. The hesitation you may feel in answering is not due to the ambiguity of the question. But do you believe that guilt is hell? If you did, you would see at once how direct and simple the text is, and you would not need a workbook at all. No one needs practice to gain what is already his. Paragraph 3. We have already said that your holiness is the salvation of the world. What about your own salvation? You cannot give what you do not have. A savior must be saved. How else can he teach salvation? Today's exercises will apply to you, recognizing that your salvation is crucial to the salvation of the world. As you apply the exercises to your world, the whole world stands to benefit. Paragraph 4. Your holiness is the answer to every question that was ever asked, is being asked now, or will be asked in the future. Your holiness means the end of guilt, and therefore the end of hell. Your holiness is the salvation of the world and your own. How could you to whom your holiness belongs be excluded from it? God does not know unholiness. Can it be he does not know his son? Paragraph 5. A full five minutes are urged for the four longer practice periods for today, and longer and more frequent practice sessions are encouraged. If you want to exceed the minimum requirements, more rather than longer sessions are recommended, although both are suggested. Paragraph 6. Begin the practice periods as usual by repeating today's idea to yourself. Then, with eyes closed, search out your unloving thoughts in whatever form they appear, uneasiness, depression, anger, fear, worry, attack, insecurity, and so on. Whatever form they take, they are unloving and therefore fearful. And so it is from them that you need to be saved. Paragraph 7. Specific situations, events, or personalities you associate with unloving thoughts of any kind are suitable subjects for today's exercises. It is imperative for your salvation that you see them differently. And it is your blessing on them that will save you and give you vision. Paragraph 8, slowly without conscious selection without, and without undue emphasis on any one in particular, search your mind for every thought that stands between, between you and your salvation. Apply the idea for today to each of them in this way. My unloving thoughts about blank are keeping me in hell. My holiness is my salvation. Paragraph 9, you may find these practice periods easier if you intersperse them with several short periods during which you merely repeat today's idea to yourself slowly a few times. You may also find it helpful to include a few short intervals in which you just relax and do not seem to be thinking of anything. Sustained concentration is very difficult at first. It will become much easier as your mind becomes more disciplined and less distractible. Paragraph 10. Meanwhile, you should feel free to introduce variety into the exercise periods in whatever form appeals to you. Do not, however, change the idea itself as you vary the method of applying it. However you elect to use it, the idea should be stated so that its meaning is the fact that your holiness is your salvation. 
end each practice period by repeating the idea in its original form once more and adding, if guilt is hell, what is its opposite? In the shorter applications, which should be made some three or four times an hour and more if possible, you may ask yourself this question, repeat today's idea and preferably both. If temptations arise, a particularly helpful form of the idea is, my, my holiness is my salvation from this. Okay, <clears throat> there's what to talk about here. So let's go through it. We're going to, this is, a, as I said, this is definitely a longer one. It has 11 paragraphs. Um, some of the others had only like four or five. Um, so this is twice as long. So here we go. The, my holiness is my salvation. Paragraph one, if guilt is hell, what is its opposite? Well, you might say heaven, right? Um, but I think most people don't realize that guilt is hell, right? So, so we're not even sure. You know, the question itself, for most of us, um, does not really necessarily resonate unless we have been learning the course. Um, part of the part of the thing is is that we're not aware of our guilt. We're not in touch with our guilt. And thus, we're not in, really in touch with how our guilt is really keeping us in, locked in to the ego thought system, which is um, hell bent on us experiencing hell. <laughs> um, so, like the text for which this workbook was written, the ideas used for the exercises are very simple, very clear, and totally unambiguous. So the text and the work up, workbook um, said, you know, Jesus is saying the ideas are simple, clear, and totally unambiguous. Now, um, he, he says that, but, but in reality, they're not <laughs> for most of us, right? They're not, they're not totally s simple and clear and totally unambiguous. Um, on some level, they are, you know, there's either love or fear, there's, there's no in between. There's one or the other. That's simple and clear. But um, we can't really say that this text is completely unambiguous. I think it's very challenging reading. It's very challenging to understand sometimes what Jesus is getting at. Um, we are not concerned with intellectual feats nor logical toys. We are dealing, dealing only in the very obvious, which has been overlooked in the clouds of complexity in which you think you think. Now, this is obvious if you're free of the complexity, but, but most of us are not free of the complexity. We're still dealing with the clouds, the clouds of guilt, the clouds of confusion. Um, and so it's not clear and simple and un unambiguous. I think that's part of the point here. Jesus is saying, this should be clear. This should be simple. This should be unambiguous, but um, it's not because you're not. Paragraph two, if guilt is hell, what is its opposite? Right? He asks the same question. This is not difficult, surely. The hesitation you may feel in answering is not due to the ambiguity of the question, but do you believe that guilt is hell? Right? So we don't realize that guilt is hell. We don't realize that guilt is the problem. If you did, you would see at once how direct and simple the text is, and you would not need a workbook at all. No one needs practice to gain what is already his. So if, you're, if you really understood the ego, what the ego is driving at, if you really understood that guilt is the problem, and there's, there is one solution for that, um, then you wouldn't need to practice this. I mean, if you really understood, like if you really completely understood then you wouldn't need the text or the workbook. It would be very clear. You'd be living free of guilt. You'd be, you'd know for certain that you are sinless, that you are God's son, that nothing could ever change that, that has never changed. Um, but most of us do not. We do not live consistently in that space. We don't, we are not established in that knowing, in that certitude. We have doubts. <clears throat> so paragraph three. We have already said that your holiness is the salvation of the world. What about your own salvation? You cannot give what you do not have. 
A savior must be saved. How else can he teach salvation? Today's exercise will apply to you, recognizing that your salvation is crucial to the salvation of the world. As you apply the exercises to your world, the whole world stands to benefit. So you must save yourself first and recognize that your holiness is your own salvation. And then the, the world will, will follow, right? The world will, will um, everything will shift. You don't have to change the world. The changing of the world will, will come from changing your own mind, right? Seek not to change the world. Seek only to change your mind about the world. Um, and when you change your mind about the world, you see a different world. Not only do you see a different world, but the world will, will, will shift. People will, in your, at least in your um, uh, association and environment, will, they will, will learn from you. You will be a living example to them. Your holiness will um, shine through and people will, will, will learn from you. Um, now, this goes deeper than that, too. But, but, you know, it starts, everything starts and ends with you, with your um, shift in, in vision, changing your vision. Paragraph four, your holiness is the answer to every question that was ever asked, is being asked now, or will be asked in the future. Your holiness means the end of guilt and therefore the end of hell. Your holiness is the salvation of the world and your own. How could you to whom your holiness belongs be excluded from it? God does not know unholiness. Can it be he does not know his son? So God does not have any unholiness. God does not know of sin. God, God does not know of separation. Um, thus, this idea of your holiness which basically is the atonement principle, which is that, that we have never left God. We are still one with God. Separation is an illusion. Sin is an illusion. Guilt is an illusion. Um, that's the answer to everything. It's the end of guilt and therefore the end of hell. And it's the salvation of the world. And how could you be excluded? And part of the problem is that we think, on some level, we think that we are special in our suffering, right? We're special in our guilt. We, um, everyone else is okay, but we're not. <laughs> so that's part of the problem is that we, um, we still hold on to our guilt. We still hold on to our problems. We still hold on to um, people we don't like, people that we um, find problematic. We we hold on to problems which seem unsolvable, and and Jesus is just reminding us that no, everything is solved by this, by the idea that there is no guilt, right? The atonement principle. Um, paragraph five: A full five minutes are urged for the longer. Four, four longer practice periods for today, and longer, more frequent practice sessions are encouraged. If you want to exceed the minimum requirements, more rather than longer sessions are recommended, although both are suggested. So you could do um, quantity and quality, um, longer sessions, um, but you could also do more sessions. I guess it's both quantity, right? You could do more sessions throughout the day. You could also do longer sessions. I think this is, might be the first time that Jesus says this. You know, you could do more than the, you know, you, you could definitely can do more sessions. It's okay. Um, before, he was kind of going slow with us, and he's saying, don't do more than this because, um, you know, it might be too much. But now he's, like, saying, go for it. Just do more if you, if you feel it. Be my guest. Um, paragraph six, begin the practice periods as usual by repeating today's idea to yourself. Then with closed eyes, search out your unloving thoughts in whatever form they appear, uneasiness, depression, anger, fear, worry, attack, insecurity, and so on. These are all things that we all have pretty much all the time. If we're honest with ourselves, you know, we, all these things are going on in our minds. Whatever form they take, they are unloving and therefore fearful. So all these thoughts are, are basically unloving. You could look at the umbrella. The umbrella term is these are all unloving thoughts. Therefore, they are all fearful thoughts. 
they are all egoic thoughts. So we're starting by turning our mind within and, and observing our own thoughts. And so it is from them that you need to be saved. Paragraph 7, specific situations, events, or personalities you associate with unloving thoughts of any kind or suitable subjects for today's exercises. It is imperative, imperative for your salvation that you see them differently, and it is your blessing on them that will save you and give you vision. Now, these, these thoughts could be any thoughts, and they could be the, the smallest thought to the greatest thought, right? You're, maybe the smallest thought is you feel a little worry about um, something that may happen later on in the day, um, maybe just a little anxiety about something. And, you know, a bigger thought might be you're really worried about the world and the world situation and, and that... Um, we seem to be moving toward impending doom and it's imminent and the apocalypse is going to happen any moment, right? That, that kind of thinking. Um, paragraph eight. So, so, so this applies to everything, you know. There's no order of difficulty and there is no hierarchy of illusions, right, for the course. Everything, um, you want to address everything in your mind. Be indiscriminate in that sense. Um, paragraph eight, slowly without conscious selection, that's the indiscriminate, without conscious selection, without undue emphasis on any one in particular, search your mind for every thought that stands between you and your salvation. Apply the idea for today to each of them in this way. My unloving thoughts about blank are keeping me in hell. My holiness is my salvation. <clears throat> so you remind yourself that your holiness is the answer to everything. Right? The fact that you are God's son, that you are not separate, that separation is an illusion, it never happened, um, all is well in the universe, so to speak, and everything that is, seems problematic is nothing really to be concerned about, ultimately, and you don't need to, con if it's not ultimately to be concerned about, it's also not to be concerned about now. You don't have to give in to the stress and the worry, and you don't have to give in to the um, the fear, you can just rest in the knowing that your holiness is the salvation of the world. You are, um, you are God's son or a child of God. You are, you are well, you are safe. Um, there, there is really no problem unless you make a problem. Um, nine, you may find these practice periods easier if you intersperse them with several shorter periods during which you merely repeat today's idea to yourself slowly a few times. You may also find it helpful to include a few short intervals in which you just relax and do not seem to be thinking of anything. Sustained concentration is very difficult at first. It will become much easier as your mind becomes more disciplined and less distractible. So now this is this sounds almost like a meditation that you're doing, right? That, that um, Right, you, you repeat the idea almost like a mantra, right? My holiness is my salvation. My holiness is my salvation. Just maybe even mentally, my holiness is my salvation. And then you just rest, stop the mantra, <laughs> stop the, you know, the thought and just rest in the silence. And it may be difficult to do that without um, being getting distracted, but you... But as you discipline your mind, it, it'll become easier and easier to rest in the silence and also to just to remember the thought. So it, it does seem almost like a meditation here, this paragraph. Paragraph 10, meanwhile, you should feel free to introduce variety into the exercise periods in whatever form appeals to you. This is also pretty new, right? That, that you can introduce some variety yourself. Do not, however, change the idea itself as you vary the method of applying it. However you elect to use it, the idea should be stated so that its meaning is the fact that your holiness is your salvation. And each practice period by repeating the idea in its original form once more and adding, if guilt is hell, what is its opposite? So you start with that question, so you end with that question, right, that Jesus began with. If guilt is hell, what is its opposite? My holiness. And so, you know, how might, how might you vary this idea, my holiness is my salvation? You could, you know, it could be varied in different ways. You, Jesus is saying, don't, don't really lose the idea 
what you could say, my, my holiness is my salvation and the salvation of the world. My holiness saves me. My holiness is, is everything I need for salvation. You know, different ways you can put it. I think that's what he's getting at, you know. <clears throat> 11, in the shorter applications, which should be made some three or four times an hour or more if possible, you may ask yourself this question, repeat today's idea and preferably both. If temptations arise, a particularly helpful form of the idea is, my holiness is my salvation from this. My holiness is my salvation from this. Right, so you apply it specifically to whatever's going on at that moment. Um, so, you, and you can you can apply this many times throughout the day. Um, and from what he what he said before, um, you would apply it in any situation where you feel tempted to feel yourself separate, wherever you feel yourself t tempted to feel guilty. To feel separate, to feel alone, to feel afraid, to feel depressed, to feel anxious, etc. That is what Jesus means by temptation. It's not the temptation to sin. It's really the temptation to feel ourselves separate. So you, you would just remember this idea, and this idea ultimately will stick, you know, over time. This is just the beginning. As Jesus has been saying, you know, this is only the 39th le lesson. Um, and don't even think that even after a year, you'll be, it'll be enough. You know, there, there's still more to go. This, as Jesus says, this course is a beginning and not an end. So this is all just st steps along the way. But over time, our minds definitely shift. I've, I've noticed a huge shift in my own mind through, through working with the course now for over 10 years. And definitely the, this, this helps if you take it seriously, uh, but not too seriously. So anyway, hope, hope that was helpful. Next lesson is lesson 40. I am, I am blessed as a son of God. We, we got through all the holiness part and now we're moving on to blessedness. <laughs> so see you there very soon. Thank you.